The woman entered my office uninvited. Maggie was sick at home, or she would have sent her on her way. Then again, I got the feeling even Maggie couldn't have refused this woman. She had a look of determination in her icy blue eyes. Her short, ash blonde hair was swept up to the side stylishly, and she carried an oversized bag with her. Immediately, I recognized what she was. I've seen enough of her kind in my time. A pharmaceutical rep. Dr. Baum, she said, reaching out her hand. I took it and gave it a polite shake. I'm Lisa from Rendex Pharmaceuticals. We'd been trying to reach you by telephone, but never quite managed to make contact. Probably because my secretary had been doing her job, I thought to myself. She always screened those sorts of calls. I had no interest in being a shill for a drug company. My apologies, I said. What can I do for you? She set her large black bag on the reception counter next to where we were sitting and began to pull out sample packets and brochures. The phone began to ring loudly at the desk. I wanted to answer it, but the woman had already begun her pitch. Well, that's just it, Dr. Baum. It's not about what you can do for us, but what we can do for your patients. Here we go, I thought. She opened up a brochure and began to show me details from inside its glossy pages. Speaking persuasively enough that I listened instead of immediately sending her on her way, as I usually did, she was an extremely good saleswoman. Our newest drug, Smilotrix, has been accepted for approval by the FDA. It's an absolute game changer. Effective for depression, anxiety, even thoughts of self-harm can all be allayed by its formula. This is the next generation we're talking about. This drug by itself is going to completely replace SSRIs and benzos in the next few years. All the benefits without the harmful side effects and dependencies. Not only that, but instead of taking months to begin working, as is the case with most SSRIs, Smilotrix begins its effect almost immediately. Those are some very bold claims. So, you can see why we're trying so hard to reach you, to talk to you about it, she said with an undeterred smile. I picked up one of the sample boxes and examined it. The packaging looked like any other drug. A pale purple color with yellow butterflies all over it. The company's brand name stamped on it in bold letters. Rendex Pharmaceuticals? How come I never heard of you guys? We're a German company, new to North America, but we're going to make a big splash in the Western markets. I'd tell you to start investing now, but I'm sure you don't play the stock market. No, I don't. And I don't usually speak to pharmaceutical reps either, if I'm being entirely honest. But if even half your claims are true, they're all true, she replied. Her teeth fixed firmly in that unstoppable grin. Leave the sample packets. I'll do some research and think about it. How's that? She stuck out her hand for another shake, and I took it reluctantly. That's all I can ask for, Doctor. I won't take up any more of your time. I'm sure you're very busy. Packing up her bag, she thanked me and left, the broad smile still plastered on her face. It was disarming, and I couldn't help but smile back at her as she walked out saying goodbye. I vowed to do some research on my own before giving out the sample packages to anyone, so that night I took a box home with a brochure and decided I would do a few hours of reading, trying to find out what exactly the benefits and side effects of Smilotrix would be. Don't ask me what got into my head, why I ended up taking the pills, especially when I didn't even know the first thing about the company or the product. I wouldn't say I'm depressed, per se, but I've slipped into a bit of a rut since my father died a couple years back. Every day feels the same. The old pleasures of life don't bring the same enjoyment. People who know me well say I don't laugh or joke around as much as I used to. I wasn't pining for happiness. I was just curious. Still, I should have known better than to try an untested drug given to me by a stranger. Websites can be faked. They can be easily thrown up and plastered with images and information that's utterly false and misleading. It takes time for those sorts of websites to get taken down. And all it took was a visit to three or four of those fake websites provided by the pharmaceutical rep, conjured up to look real, and I was impressed. On the Smilotrix company website was a promotional video. I remember that much. But I don't remember what happened in it or why I felt so persuaded after watching it. But suddenly I wanted to try the drug for myself, to feel its amazing benefits. For some reason I'll never understand, I took out the sample packet right after watching the video on the Smilotrix company website. I examined the little round pill and saw there was a symbol etched to it that looked 
druidic and evil. While swallowing the pill dry, I couldn't help but wonder why I had done that. My phone began to ring and I picked it up to hear Maggie, my secretary, on the other end. I blinked my eyes and saw it was morning outside, and yet I had no memory of falling asleep or of anything after taking the pill. Hello, Dr. Baum. Oh, hi, Maggie, I said, smiling wide at the sound of her voice. How are you feeling? I hope you're doing a bit better. I'm feeling much better, actually. I'll be back in today. That's great news. The place isn't the same without you. She paused. Are you okay, Dr. Baum? You sound different. I'm great, Maggie. Actually, I feel better than ever. I had the best night's sleep in my life last night. I don't remember a thing. Oh, okay. I, I guess that's good. Well, I'll see you at the clinic in an hour or so. Sounds perfect. Thanks, Maggie. She hung up and I got out of bed to get myself ready for work. There was a full slate of appointments booked for that morning, but the afternoon was mostly left open for walk-ins and emergencies. It'd be nice to have Maggie back in, since she took a bit of the weight off my shoulders. Her job was to check patients in, take their weights and vital signs, as well as faxing paperwork and answering phones. It was hard to do it all by myself, especially since our fax machine was about a decade old and malfunctioned regularly. Maggie knew how to tame the ancient beast, though. As I brushed my teeth, I couldn't help but think of how long it had been since I had felt so good. Sure, the lapse in memory was slightly alarming, but... As I looked at my face in the mirror, I couldn't help but grin wider, thinking about how nice it felt just to be alive. My skin was tingling in anticipation for the day and for the things it held in store. It felt like wonderful little bugs crawling all over me, burrowing into my flesh. <laughs> how delightful. When I arrived at work, my cheeks were beginning to hurt from smiling so much. It was like I couldn't stop. Uh, no, not that. Really, I, I didn't want to. The world was just so bright and blue and wonderful. It made me want to laugh with joy, and so I did it. Then, after that, I began to giggle. As I entered my office and said good morning to Maggie, I broke into a titter, then a full-blown belly laugh. What's so funny, Dr. Baum? She asked nervously. I couldn't even answer her. I just went into my office and hung up my coat and then sat down in front of my computer, slapping my knee and guffawing. Tears were streaming down my face as I continued chuckling all the way up until my first appointment. The patient could be heard coming into the waiting room, and I held my hands to my mouth like a child in church to keep the laughter in. I listened as Maggie checked the man in and took his weight on the old rickety scale. As she brought him into the examination room, I tried to suppress my laughter, which was self-sustaining at this point. No matter how much I tried to think of sad things to stop myself from giggling, it continued. I was vaguely beginning to get worried that I couldn't stop it. Finally, I managed to focus and get it under control. Breathing deeply, I stood up started walking into the room where the patient was waiting for me, I pushed open the door and entered, saying good morning to the man who was sitting on the steel examination table wearing nothing but his underwear. He was very, very hairy. <laughs> sitting down, I looked at the laptop screen and brought up his appointment information. Patient name Harold Harry Ball, age 69. <laughs> I thought about this for a moment before bursting into laughter again. The man held his arms over his naked chest as it flushed red to match his face. For a few moments, he looked embarrassed, but then the expression changed to one of worry. Dr. Baum, are you all right? For some reason, I couldn't stop laughing to answer him. He walked out of the appointment and said he wouldn't come back. There was something wrong with me. For the rest of the day, I couldn't stop laughing, even after Maggie left. She quit after I refused to speak to her with rationality, saying that when I got my wits together, I should call her to talk and to apologize. I shut down the office for the rest of the week. The laughter continued, and then for week after week after that, until I couldn't even leave my bedroom. The pain in my diaphragm was so excruciating, the growing wounds on my face so terrifying to passers-by. It got worse and worse, and have you ever gotten the giggle so bad that your face starts to hurt? Imagine getting the giggles for a month, being unable to stop laughing for an entire four-week period. And it still isn't letting up. I still can't stop smiling. No matter how hard I try, my face hurts so badly I want to scream, but I can't do anything but continue chuckling like a, like a broken Elmo toy. They had to admit me to a hospital as my face began to split and crack around my mouth and eyes, bleeding wounds growing from the laugh lines which turned into weeping sores. Who knows when this will stop? When it will finally be out of my system is anyone's guess. The company's videos certainly aren't any help. I know that they've been wiped from the internet, vanished, 
as if they'd never existed. I just, I hope that I can be free of this toxic shit one day soon. So let this be a warning to any doctors out there. If you see Lisa from Rendex Pharmaceuticals enter your office, don't take the sample boxes. Don't watch the videos or read the brochures. Who knows what page or what image it is that will flip the switch in your mind and make you want to take the little pill she offers, grinning and promising happiness. I guarantee you, it isn't worth it. It isn't worth it. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I wanted to tell you, thank you for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. If you guys are interested, because we're moving into spring right now, that means that the uh, allergy seasons are going to be hitting us. And I don't know if you guys can hear it very well, but it hits me pretty hard to get yourself past a couple of those allergies, aller, aller, allergy, allergies. My wife sells tea. I don't know if that's connected, but hey, it's it's a segue and my wife sells tea. Check out etsy.com slash ivory monocle tea to be able to check out some of the tea that my wife makes. And you can even get a special sticker if you order the Mr. Creepy Pasta tea and you ask for it. It's a, it's a sticker of me doing a, doing a dab. It's one of my Twitch emotes. And I want to give a big thank you, as always, to all of my Patreon subscribers on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. You are the ones that allow me to do stuff, like getting specific stories just for the channel. If you guys want to see more of that, then I would really, really, really love if you guys could help support on Patreon.com slash Pasta, like some of these wonderful guys, such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Kraus, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Silty K. Sterlerson, Zachary Graphius, It's All About That Folk and Music, Gorang Trimegacy, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Dabbles Rat, Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tolly Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Milver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zaccardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, the Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. You guys, as well as everybody, if you look down in the description, and everybody that can even just give one dollar to be able to help things out, I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to join this list of names that I horribly, horribly mispronounce, check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and honestly, even you guys who just listen, you watch, you comment, you like, you subscribe, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And sweet dreams. <laughs>